your mic is not. Where where are you? I don't know where you are. Oh, there you are. Hi, you're so dark. And like you said, I'm not like going to buy it and like having a look. But I think um, the visual the visual element of music is really I think it's very important because sometimes you just stand out in like the crowd and you think it's the act of playing that you're going to be amongst, especially with piano and bass open the lyrics and then you describe yourself as different and other and what in, in which you get from the direction and that's what music is for. Oh well. I think um, I think visual is can be if if you want to make it can be very important, and um, it's been an it's been an interesting struggle for me because I've there's definitely been moments where I feel like it can be kind of a liability um, because it's because um, it's not very hip or at least when. Where we were when we were starting the band, it was definitely not hip to like act, you know, act all theatrical and wear makeup and do costumes on stage. In fact, we got like mercilessly made fun of in our hometown as like the gay mime band, <laughs> uh, where everyone else was like too cool for school and just like wearing plaid shirts and leather jackets and were looking at us at like we were totally stupid. Uh, but then we did better than all those other bands, so I feel good. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I've been thinking about this because people ask me about this all the time and I, I feel like I always took it for granted, probably because of how I grew up and what my influences were. I think I just took it for granted that if you were a songwriter and wanted to be a rock star and a touring musician, that that was part of the deal. And I was reared on a diet in my early, early days, first of all being like completely mesmerized by MTV 24 hours a day because it was like 1984 and it's all, uh, everyone was just obsessed with MTV back then and it was when MTV just played music videos all the time instead of, there, were, there was, you know, there was no bullshit on it and the videos were really good and I was watching Prince and Michael Jackson and Cyndi Lauper and Madonna and it was the way I was hearing music. I wasn't really listening to the radio, I was watching MTV and I was, you know, and the full picture was, oh, like songs, performing, costumes, persona, like that's, that's the job. The job is that you do all of that and you get to do really fucked up cool music videos. And, um, and it's interesting because, like Brian came from a somewhat different background. He was four or five years younger than me and he was, like, his big influence as a, t as a teenager and stuff were, I mean, he grew up sort of on metal and stuff. Like, his favorite bands were, like, Slayer and Megadeth and Metallica that had their own sort of theatrical side. But then he got really into grunge, which was sort of the first wave of, like, fuck artificiality and, you know, everybody just get up on stage and what you're wearing, and that means you're an authentic band. And Brian sort of always straddled the difference because he... Like, he loved being a freak, and he was, like, he was the one who got banned from his stage school for dressing up like Frankenfurter from the Rocky Horror Picture Show during their school talent contest. Um, and, you know, the, 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 the one thing that we had in common was, like, we should be able to dress however we want and do whatever we want and be loud and flamboyant. Like, that's the exciting part of being a rock star, isn't it? Like, that you get to do that. Not just that you should do it, but that you get to do it because it's fun. And I think that's the way we, we always looked at it, is that that was like a perk of the job, <laughs> is that you get to just like try anything on and look like a freak and everyone like lets you, because it's your job. If you, and if you have any other job and you're, you're, you know, you're a banker or a barista or whatever, like you're not supposed to do that, but we're supposed to do it. And we got really excited about that. And the, you know, the backlash of that is that people are gonna think that you're kind of gimmicky and we had to deal with that. And I still have to deal with that for a long time. Like that is the way people, will describe you. They won't talk about your music and they won't talk about, you know, your passionate way of performing. They, they'll talk about the costumes and the makeup because you're, because you're singular. And that really bugged us for a while and it's something that I still have to contend with all the time and it's kind of a bitch. Um, but I think, you know, I think in general, the reason I gravitated towards it and why people gravitate towards it in general, and if you look back through thousands and thousands of years of musical and theatrical history, it's a way of setting up a world or an atmosphere where you're, you're delineating yourself as a performer for the audience. And 
there's something important about that. Even if it's just, you know, putting on a mask or putting on makeup or putting on a spangly coat, there's a reason that that's always happened and there's a reason that it's always worked and it's because it's, it's making the difference between, you know, this is me just like the person who walked in off the street and this is me, the person who's here to perform for you. And I think it's important not to lose that like very fundamental point, which is that, you know, music can be, you know, it can be this really wonderful celebration, this performance that you're doing for somebody else. And, and there, was a, there was a period of time, especially in the 90s, where that was really not in vogue and it actually was very out of style to do that. And it's really interesting actually watching it come back in right now. Like a lot of bands are getting much more hammy and glammy and fun. And it's, and that's really cool to see because it's also a lot much more fun for the audience. Like I remember going to the shows, shows in the nineties and just watching everyone look so bored and feeling so sad that like that everyone thought that that's what their job was. Like the audience thought their job was to just sort of stand there and be despondent and bored. And the band thought that their job was to stand there and like look as cool and bored as possible. And I was like, no, like there's there's all sorts of other possibilities like you're allowed to have fun and everyone's like no we're not it's so i'm watching that change though and it's actually it's really cool and i think it's changing um i think it's changing everywhere like everywhere i go i'm seeing a lot more craziness at live shows and a lot and a lot of bands being not afraid to to look freaky i think it's important that goes back to my my to my band person make make sure you look awesome on stage or <laughs> Um, let's take another question. 